to those who hung around. Uh, today we are going to be drawing uh, Jack the Bulldog, but actually his name is Mike Jack because I run the Hilltop Show, which is Georgetown University. Usually, oh my gosh, I ran into that. I, I am the host and president of Georgetown University's uh, political comedy web series, uh, and we are not sponsored by the university. Uh, presumably, we try, but presumably they don't want to give us money, rightfully so, because we get into trouble, and I understand that, so. Uh, but we can't call our mascot Mike Jack, because I think they got a patent on, on the actual Jack the Bulldog. Um, so we have renamed ours Mike Jack, which for those who still use aux cords with their phones, uh, is the hole that you put the microphone into in your phone. So this is Mike Jack. I drew this uh, while watching the show before mine, while getting ready, but his name is Mike Jack, and we're going to be drawing him right now. Let's do this. So pencils and paper out. Uh, long as RS, the answer to your question then is that we are drawing Mike Jack today. Hope that answers your question. All right, let's do this. Let's start with a circle. Let me fix my lighting just a little bit. Go to make it less of a shadow. Okay. Great. Go to circle, and you're going to want to make that nice and light because you're going to go over it more thickly in a minute. So I'm just going to draw the same thing as this, so hopefully having the bottle next to it will help. Uh, we're doing a three-quarter view, so that line's going to go right down the middle of his face. And notice how his uh, eyes are kind of at a swoop. We're going to do that over here as well. And that just helps that expression be even more, um, be even more uh, vibrant. So we're going to now, I like to do his brow up there first because it's like the peak of the expression and it makes sense to me. Uh, we're going to go right down from his brow because remember he's a bulldog, he's got big, like, hefty eyebrows. And we do a line right down to his cheek right there. And then you can start to draw that cheek line. All right. And then you're going to draw his head and have that line go down to the bottom of that next line right there. And uh, one of my favorite animators and film people named Byron Howard, who worked on Zootopia, I mentioned this in the last stream, uh, is particularly good at drawing cute animals. And he, uh, he has a really big tip on that front, and that is that you want to make their heads shaped like gumdrops. <laughs> so kind of like this. You want to make their heads shaped like this. Kind of like little rounded trapezoids, if you will. So we're going to follow uh, good old Byron Howard's advice, and we're going to now add the other eyebrow. And I kind of like the sass. I, it is the DreamWorks face, but it's a good expression. Sometimes things are cliches because they're good. <laughs> you can quote me on that. All right, now he has his little eyebrow. And now we're going to add, hey, you can tell me, I was wondering what we should do next. We're going to add the bridge of his eye, of his nose on which his eye will rest. Oops, I'm going to the eraser. Hopefully this one won't smudge everywhere. Okay. We're going to give him, this would normally be an eyelash, but we want him to kind of have a sassy face. Uh, so we're going to make that kind of like the area above his eyelid, where his eyelid kind of meets his eye, or the eye is where his eyelid meets his, his brow. All right, and then we're going to add the top of his muzzle. And bulldogs have a lot of like skin and fur, so we're gonna add a little flap here where his muzzle meets his face. All right, and dogs, and this is especially in contrast to the cat talk show host that we drew last week. Dogs have much bigger noses. Like cats have the kind of the two triangles, the petite triangle together in the words of uh, Christopher Hart, an illustrator, uh, the cat nose and petite triangle. Dog noses are like massive. Like if, you're th if you think about Doug from Up, his nose is huge and it's supposed to look that way because it's supposed to look funny. Big, big noses in cartoons are often usually supposed to look humorous. So we're gonna give this doggy a big nose. And now we're gonna add the other side of his muzzle, which is essentially like a circle a big o or an oval uh, with a little indent at the bottom. And that's where we're kind of little, I don't even know why dogs or animals have that line. <laughs> the split lip, I don't know. All right, 
and then we added two little nostrils down there on the other, on, underneath his nose. All right, oh, there's the cat, see? See it's a triangle? Yeah, our dog doesn't have that. Okay, and now we're going to draw his cheek. So, um, like if you look at an animal smiling, or sorry, if you, I guess this is a dog, if you look at an animal smiling, you might not see that kind of line near its nose, but we want this dog to look a little bit more uh, human. And if you look at a human smiling, uh, they'll have skin near their nose that will kind of still go down, uh, but the smile pushes up that line at the end. So that's what we're gonna do. See how this part of it is still going down and then the smile pushes, pushes it upwards. So with my light a little bit. Okay, whatever. All right, so now we're gonna draw the upper side of that, of that cheek. And one thing you're gonna to wanna to remember is the whole head's at a slant. So what I shouldn't do is draw the eye starting up here because that would not be anatomically correct. We want the eye to start lower than this one does. See how this one starts at a plane? This one starts lower? That's really important. Otherwise, the whole face will look out of proportion. There, that's better. <laughs> okay. Then we're gonna draw the other side of his cheek. This one looks like he's got slightly different sized cheeks than the other guy. Whatever, it's more of a chipmunk, I guess. Okay. Right. And one thing you're gonna also wanna do is have the line under his eye match, um, match with the way that the cheek curves outside his head. Oh, thank you. Thank you to the nice people saying nice things in chat. Very nice of you. And then some people say you shouldn't erase while you're drawing, but this is a tutorial <laughs> and I want you to have the right information. So I'm gonna erase some of those excess lines. All right, now I'm going to add his ears and this is another Byron Howard trick. You want the ears to start kind of at that junction, a little bit above that, because as a uh, Walt Staunchfield, a Disney animator who gave some really famous lectures in the uh, during the Bronze Age, which is my personal favorite of the Disney eras, um, you never want a tangent, which is where you have um, two lines generally going in the same direction that meet somewhere. It's just a rule of thumb. You never want that. No, that. What you instead want is this. You want this instead, not this, not this, you want this. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Or this, I forget. Okay. We're doing that, okay. Now we're going to add that expression, actually bring it to life. So one thing that's really important for those kind of DreamWorks face, low sassy expressions is that the eyes have to um, have the eyelid three quarters down because if you have the eyelid only like a third or half of the way down, the expression doesn't read immediately. You want it three quarters of the way down. All right, I'm gonna add a little light in his eye. Here we go. Also, I'm using a really soft leaded pencil it says 2B or not 2B. This is definitely not a 2B pencil, so you get it. I got this from the uh, Royal Shakespeare Company gift shop in Stratford. I went on a study abroad trip. Um, the summer before the last one. All right. So yeah, this one's gonna look a little different now, and that's okay. All right. Another approach you can do to make a smile look a little, oh, I like that. Another approach you can do to make a smile look a little more sassy is add the little teeth there. I haven't watched that much Johnny Carson, but I feel like that's how Johnny Carson smiled. I can just kind of tell. What if you want a different expression? Yeah, you know, hey, well, you're the artist. You make the, you make the calls. You draw him however you want to draw him. Um, if you have questions about how to achieve a certain expression, ask them in the chat and I can look up over my iPad while I'm drawing you. Okay. All right. Now we're going to draw his rest of his body. And we're going to start by doing, I added a little tie here so that I have a guideline for where his body will kind of end. Also, I did draw all of the uh, Hilltop Show posters and stuff. It's all me. So this is very much an official tutorial. 
which will go on our channel soon. I know, I can't wait to go back to eBay. How can you make a sarcastic expression? Um, so the trick with that is the lowered eyes, like just like this. Someone asked in the chat, how do you make a sarcastic expression? You want the lowered eyes and then you want the swooped eyebrows. And you want to make sure, and this is no, yeah, this is side, this is a sidetrack, but if someone asks, it's important. Um, you, when you're making the swoop, you want to be sure that the uh, lowest part of that eyebrow, like, is 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 down into the eye. Otherwise, you'll look embarrassed. You don't want that because there's a very fine line between the sarcastic and the embarrassed which is almost, it's more curved. It's more kind of wishy-washy. It's got less sure of itself kind of um, angled lines. I hope that helps. You can experiment, I know, um, you can experiment with that advice on your paper, viewers at home. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, the, that's one of the main rules of thumb there. All right, so now I am going to draw his, his body off at the desk. And so one really important thing for this is that he's leaning. He's leaning his weight on one. He's leaning his weight on one side, and not this side, not the other side. All right. Just like that. And I like to have him kind of clenching his fist just a little bit. He's kind of resting his hand, kind of like this. So you've got the knuckles kind of resting there. And you want compression. Compression. See how compression is like, see how it starts thinner and then it gets bigger because it's resting there? That's how it works, okay. This one, I just have a little paw sticking out, but for some reason I get kind of more macho vibe with this guy. So this guy's got knuckles. <laughs> it's the same character, don't judge. Okay, I know, I know. Okay, and then you've got the collar, you've got the other lapel here, and then, oh, I might have to erase the label of who this is. You'll remember, won't you? Okay, let's erase that so we have room for his hand. Okay. I want to make sure this line is make sure this line is straight. I could draw the Union Jack on the tie. I have a Union Jack hanging on my door over there. Let me see. Uh, yeah, close enough. <laughs> All right. If I were inking this, I would make it more exact. Okay. And then again, one tip, and this guy will be a little different. One tip for cute characters is giving them basically zero muscle mass. <laughs> We're gonna give him basically zero muscle mass. It's his little undershirt. There it is. There he is. He's pointing at something. <laughs> He's probably going to say, this is fine, just like the guy last week. All right. There it is. I mean, that is our guy. And um, if you have been drawing along with us, please post your work on Instagram and Twitter. Please do this. And tag me at Alexandra Bowman Art on Instagram and at Scripta underscore Bene on Twitter. So I'm going to add Birdie. Let's get there it is. And then Instagram is like what? It's like this, right? <laughs> there you go. There it is. There's Jack. <laughs> 